any given time, there are dozens, even hundreds of adversaries involved in confrontation, ranging from threat to outright conflict. With more than seven-tenths of the Earth's surface covered by seas and over a hundred sovereign states possessing coastlines, one of the most challenging tasks assigned to the United States Navy is to assure such hostilities do not spill over into the world's seaways and threaten freedom of the seas. Maritime Air Patrol has many horizons, search and rescue being one of the most important. We've got a small light here at 10 o'clock, John. Air Center 3, take a look. At Air Center 3, we have a small light, 10 o'clock, about 7 or 8 miles. TC flight, uh, I think we got our contact out here, 10 miles. We're going to take a look at him. Can we talk to this guy on any radios? Even on the darkest of nights, or in low visibility situations, the Lockheed-built P-3C Orion can clearly see otherwise invisible targets with its infrared detecting set, or ERDS. Roger, sir, we have your position. The help should be there by tomorrow morning. Thank you so much for your help. Go ahead, 7-3. I have an ESM contact, Baron 275. Stand by, I'll send it to you and evaluate it. Sensor 3 has got a contact. Do you want to take a look at him? See if he can give us radar vectors into it. No mission is dearer than one which serves and saves lives. However, the U.S. Navy's three, primary mission is sea contact. control, the purpose for which the multi-mission P-3C Orion was developed. Okay, Sensor 3. Talk me in. Sensor 3 flight, uh, be sure to get this on Earth's film. And TC, are you taking a look at this contact? Roger, flight. I'll make sure intelligence sees this. When Erds reveals something of specific interest, it can be simultaneously recorded onto motion picture film for a more detailed appraisal by the ASWAC back at home base. Okay, where is he now? looks pretty important. I think we better call the skipper and the ops boss in. At two in the morning? We're up, aren't we? The primary role of the ASWAC, the Navy's acronym for Anti-Submarine Warfare Operations Center, is to coordinate intelligence pertaining to air, surface, and subsurface activities. Then, direct the appropriate response as the situation warrants. Morning, Gina. Good morning, Skipper. Great time for a meeting. Yes, sir. Crew 2 just brought in some infrared photography on a Group 4 that probably had a couple of patrol boats on board. I thought you might want to take a look at it. Cutting up the road. The Group 4 continues at the same course of speed, sir. You could reach Godarva by 10 a.m. in the morning. You could see the patrol boats right on front there. Back that up, bro. Okay, we need to get somebody out there. Let's launch for ready. Okay, this could be hot. You want to set up around the clock ops? Definitely. Let's do that. Yes, sir. Hello? Yeah, I'll be right down. Quick, all weather, day or night response is the hallmark of effective maritime air patrol. And as the crews who fly the Orions know, 
It's their plane's long legs, dash speed, and dogged endurance which gives the P-3 its unique role in the Navy's sea control mission. This morning's mission requires they intercept the suspect ship before it can reach the sanctuary of Guadarba's airspace. Then, at dawn's first light, photograph its unusual deck cargo. By mid-morning, the photo recon flight returns. It's too early for this. You always complain. Morning, guys. As some of you might know, Crew 2 obtained some infrared film on a Group 4 arms carrier during event SA-193 last night. Cargo included two probable fast attack torpedo boats. Ready alert was launched and confirmed the presence of the two turret class PT boats. The arms carrier is estimated to have entered the port of Guadarba around 1000 today. For several months now, Guadarba has been threatening to close off the straits to maritime commerce, thereby preventing 65% of the world's oil from being exported. The acquisition of these patrol boats would indicate that Guadarba is ready to carry out its threat. As a result of this, the United States Navy battle group has been ordered to leave its exercise in the northern Atlantic and proceed to a modlot position off from Godarba. Your mission is to relocate and gain indications of intended movement on a Soviet nuclear attack submarine. The submarine was last located approximately 400 nautical miles. Though a battle group has been ordered into the threat area, it will still be days before their arrival. But the vital element which frequently tempers hostile actions is the quickness with which our presence is evidenced. Designed to have great range, on-station endurance, and mission flexibility, Orion is ideally suited to fill that gap. That time between the inception of a threatening incident to the surface fleet's ability to respond. Meeting this challenge are the men and women who operate and maintain the burly Orions. They are years ahead of their civilian counterparts in shouldering the responsibility for these multi-million dollar systems and the crews who fly them. The P-3 features one of aviation's soundest airframes, providing an exceptionally low maintenance to flight hours ratio. Her four sturdy turboprop engines require a minimum of servicing while assuring maximum reliability. Within a matter of hours, Orion will be projecting America's concern for freedom of the seas by providing airborne convoy protection. to fly at dash speeds in excess of 400 knots, then stay airborne for over 14 hours, even longer when patrolling on three or even two engines, Orion is usually the first to be over troubled waters. Though Orion is a warrior for all seasons, equipped to handle numerous maritime missions, she is first and foremost a submarine hunter. The P-3's electronic surveillance measures, or ESM, has detected a pulse of air search radar. 
A moment later, an earlier deployed passive buoy also hey, gains contact, which the acoustic sensor operator identifies as a Soviet nuclear submarine. Echo uh, sensor one, I believe I have contact on uh, low far three. Okay. Mike, go ahead and turn to one one zero, please. Roger, flight cap search car on, please. Roger, are we depressurized, flight? Yeah, we're depressurized. Okay, get the free pulse shoot ready. We'll be uh, putting dive bar 15, die cast 2 way on top, at a small. Roger, Roger. dive bar 15 and die cast. Roger, I got him. Tally ho, 1130 just left of the nose. Stand by, man. You got him, he's up. Got him on Earth, on the field, and stand by, man. Roger. My reason was called, sir. Stand by with the smoke. And give me a down, down, down on top flight. Roger, stand by about 10 seconds. And it looks like he's getting ready to go down. He's going to be going down on it. Five seconds. Mark on top. Now. 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 Nope. Man on, man, man. Boys away. That's coming around. Go that way. Back ass tour is up. Uh, the thing's up and going. Roger, go ahead and pick two. Aft observer, see if you can still see him. Uh, fly off, be advised. Uh, I don't see him anymore. It looks like he's completely up and down. I got a slight swirl, flight. At the tactical coordinator station, each sonobuoy, as well as the P3C's own movements, are tracked by a digital computer. This displayed data provides the tactical coordinator an electronic view of his battlefield and helps him to see where he should make his next move. I just stand by, he's about 15 seconds. Alright, search bar. search bar. The magnetic anomaly detector, or MAD, pinpoints the target's location with attack accuracy. But today, Orion's mission is not to interdict sea traffic in any form, but to collect vital data. Data which will be forwarded to the approaching battle group information that will be used to guide the fleet out of harm's way. But the dimensions of the operation expand as Guadarva's sponsors choose to fly their own flag. On the third day, a Kirov-class missile cruiser is spotted approaching the threat area. And another submarine is detected along the battle group's route. The demands upon the Orions expand. So prodigious are the P-3's surveillance systems, she is able to screen hundreds of thousands of square nautical miles per flight, producing a flow of data which would literally overwhelm basic intelligence sources. Were it not for the ASWAP's bank of computers, which sort the vital information from the redundant. Updated computer tapes keep Orion's crews aware of the current tactical situation and their attention focused on that which is important. the steady beat begins to take its toll. By day five, another Kirov is spotted heading for Guadarba. The need to monitor so many threats has begun to stress the very fiber of Orion's geographic spread. A stress that is eased by bringing in a Naval Reserve squadron of P-3s. And since Orion is essentially a self-contained weapon system, needing a minimum of support equipment, even the most remote air bases can be used as a temporary home. Fuel, spare parts, and weapons are delivered daily. Day eight, 
the battle group has arrived. Its very presence will cause others to pause and weigh carefully their course of action. And that is the objective of the power projection mission, to emphasize the wisdom of restraint. Intelligence indicates a submarine transiting in from the southwest should reach point alpha approximately noon tomorrow. How many, how many submarines does that make now? That'll be two threat submarines that we know of in the area this time. Okay. Now the carrier's own fighters and attack bombers will provide convoy protection, while S-3 Vikings will take over monitoring the subsurface threat, freeing the P-3s for other duties. But in the beginning, only Orion was here, playing a pivotal role by demonstrating that our naval power can reach far quickly. With the battle group's own S-3 Vikings taking over the inter-ring surveillance, the Orions will be assigned to patrol the task force's extended outer ring, a role that will now feature several additional talents of the multi-missioned P-3. Capital Lima, Foxtrot 06, contact on Soviet submarine this time. Stand by to enter the link net. Through data link, the Orion can load the Viking's own computer with all the mission data which has been generated by the now departing P-3, instantly putting the S-3 into the current tactical picture. Taco S-3 is in the link net at this time. Now moving into the outer defense zone, Orion will conduct long-range, low-profile surveillance. Discreetly monitoring passive listening buoys, scrutinizing surface contacts with its passive infrared detector. I have an ESM contact bearing 275, stand by. While ESM scans the horizon for traces of radar radiation. It is in this mode, as the passive hunter, that the Orion can be most effective, catching the throb of a submarine as it hurries to intercept the battle group, or detecting the approach of a hostile who may be using his search radar. All without the potential threat, even knowing an aircraft is in the vicinity. Okay, Tackle, what I'm showing is a head net Charlie off the surface combat. Uh, even though on extended patrol, Orion can still communicate directly with the battle group in encrypted, voice, data link, or high-speed teletype. A talent which allows the P-3 to provide the battle group one of its most effective offensive weapons over the horizon targeting. With its precise navigational systems and advanced computer logic, Orion can direct some of the battle group's most powerful weapons onto unsuspecting targets. sector in that direction, see if you can get me a new radar contact. And I've got you a radar contact, send it to Parker. I have it. And unlike the past, when radio silence played havoc with tactical coordination, line of sight data link allows Orion to transmit, receive, or relay the most complex data without compromising the fleet's position. In short, the P-3 Orion is ideally suited for the command, control, and communication mission. Equally as effective in helping to defend the fleet are Orion's own weapon systems. A P-3 can carry missiles, bombs, ASW depth charges, and homing torpedoes. Utilizing the Harpoon missile's 60-mile standoff range, the P-3 can attack surface targets independently of the battle group, or in concert with it. 
and Orion can carry six harpoons. One of the most effective utilizations of the P-3 as a weapon delivery platform is its ability to combine omega and inertial navigation with computer logic in the deployment of minefields for choke point tactics. An Orion can lay 12,000 pounds of mines per flight. Orion has many stingers, but the aim of the power projection mission is to demonstrate potential to leave no doubt of commitment and our ability to honor that commitment. A commitment that began with Orion's original detection of Guadarba's potential threat to maritime navigation. Within hours, P-3 Orions began around-the-clock patrols over the threat area, and the situation continued to grow until the battle group's arrival, proving to Guadarba and her friends that free navigation of the sea is a vital issue to America. One, if challenged, could lead to a confrontation neither side wants. take a minute to update you on the Godarva incident. From Crew 2's initial detection on the infrared film to the crew that's just landing now, it's been a superb evolution. The boss is well pleased. The task force is now on station. Godarva has withdrawn its torpedo boats, and it looks like we've checkmated the situation. As this winds down, we're going to reduce our flying on the Godarva incident to one flight a day. All right. <laughs> Now, I don't want you to lower your guard. Stay sharp and heads up. Checkmated, not the worst of objectives for cooling down a crisis, because no kings are lost, nor shots fired. And that is the goal of today's Navy, to play the game so well, there can be no doubt of our commitment, nor illusion of our ability to win. This means being ready. Being there first, with the tools needed to do the job. In this role, the multi-mission P-3 Orion is truly a guardian of the seas. <laughs>